in 2021, everything had to have a blockchain angle, and then you got a little valuation boost. And in 2022, if you have an AI angle, that's the case. So if you thought you could escape hearing about transformers or LLMs or AI, you were wrong. AI is the new Web3 this year. And even though there's a lot of hype, we do think a lot of this hype is a lot more warranted than a lot of the hype that's been in years past around AI and even in themes like Web3. For the past couple of years, we've been paying really close attention as these large general purpose transformer models have progressed. And the rate of progress is just so astounding that we feel like we're, we're at a tipping point that's unlocking new productivity, new categories. So why now? Large purpose transformer models are getting really, really good. They can generate text, audio, speech that's almost on par, if not at par, with uh, human quality. And so you can't tell if it was human generated or machine generated. GPUs are developing efficiency at Moore's law rate combined with models that are getting twice as efficient every, every six months to 12 months, meaning we can ingest a lot more data and train on a lot more data as well. And this means that the rate of advancement for the whole ecosystem is significantly faster than Moore's law. So if you think this stuff is good today, it's gonna be like mind blowing good in a year or two. Lastly, and I think most relevant to all of us, is that this is accessible to startups and to the people. <laughs> and if you had looked at the ecosystem a year ago even, or two years ago, it seems pretty inaccessible and it felt like all these centralized organizations that had unfair access to compute and to data would either capture the most value or extract maximum value from end customers. But what's happened recently is that there's a lot of different developer APIs that are making this available to builders. And the open source community, most importantly, has really risen up and shown an ability to build models that are performing at parity. So it really lowers the cost and it makes it far more accessible. So we think we're going to start to see a lot of this technology weaved in across our platforms. So now the scary part. There's a lot of hype <laughs> and a lot of change and uncertainty. And so Investors be warned, if you're chasing the hot thing today, it probably won't be the hot thing tomorrow. We've seen this happen, like a model comes out that's like awesome, and then a few weeks later, like another one comes out and it's even better and cheaper and free. And so it's, it's, uh, it's moving really fast and we've been spending a lot of time trying to stay really focused and think through where we think value is gonna accrue and the areas we're actively pursuing. So these are the areas that we're most focused on. We'll talk through some of them pretty quickly. The AI native categories, these are categories that just weren't possible before. Bessemer recently invested in Jasper. If you haven't used it, it's like totally mind blowing. You can say like, write me a performance review um, about this person and it'll, it'll generate it. Write me a love letter to pizza and it will generate a first draft. It's, it's remarkable. Search, which I think is a huge opportunity to rethink in a much more contextualized and personalized way a lot of our information systems. And lastly, the enablement, where we're looking at the enablement layer that's really model agnostic, not specific to one model, but is also differentiated by network effects um, and community participation. So as we are thinking about where value is going to accrue, we're focused on different modes of differentiation and different modes of defensibility. And we wanna see not necessarily all of these characteristics, but at least one of these characteristics. And so the first is full stack with a data moat. We do think that while there is potential just at the application layer and we are investing there, we think the biggest and best outcomes probably will have the ability to differentiate by generating proprietary data on their platforms that they can feed in and own the technology and owning the magic and like really owning what makes your product so special will give you an advantage. Again, we talked about the model agnostic enablers. We're looking at first movers that have an early advantage in their category, that's like Jasper and specialist applications. This is, I think Steve had a good word for this, it was like bilingual founders. We also want to find bilingual founders in this space too. Uh, and in, that, in this case, it means technical founders, but also those that are really highly commercial. It's actually like shockingly hard to find the combo. We think that there's a huge premium for teams that can bring both of those skill sets to the table. We're mostly looking at the seed and early stages. And one of the things that we think is super important is to look at companies that have, where we can see the usage patterns um, over time. There's a lot of cool demos, a lot of hype, but a lot of things that get one-time usage, and we're really looking to see where the retention curves asymptote after six months to make sure that these products and use cases really become sticky. 
For those who maybe haven't dug in as deeply, I'm gonna run through really quickly a couple just examples of some of the types of companies that we're excited about. Replica is a company that has a couple million downloads and users, but a lot of people haven't heard about. This is an AI chatbot that you can build AI companion, a friend to talk to, to have a relationship with, romantic relationship, whatever it might be. Some people think it's crazy, but people spend hours and hours talking to their replica friends. You can imagine this over time becoming much more akin to even like a personal assistant and some of the promise that like a Siri and Alexa had early on. So the cool thing about LLMs is that they're trained on language, like actual language that we use every day which means that we can interact with them using our own natural language too. And that is like pretty a wild change from being able to interact with the computer with language as opposed to with code. And so we think that has some pretty radical implications for different experiences and products that will be built and just how even what human computer interaction will look like. But in the near term, some practical examples like Excel. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. I love and hate Excel you can just generate the formula that you need to run any sort of analysis. We talked about Jasper, talked a little bit about search. If you remember this image, the one on the left I got from Google Images, the one on the right I just generated. I think it's gonna really change how we think about information discovery and retrieval. And this is our, our market map. So one thing that I'm excited to announce to this group is that we have a new AI advisory board. We'd love to collaborate with all of you on this and make this available to you, but we've brought together recently a group of world-class technical and commercial advisors that are working with us to evaluate new investment opportunities, but also to support our portfolio companies. And we'd love to share this with the seed community. So similar to what Ethan did, Wagmai, this is, these are some of the ways that we'd love to work together. But with no further ado, if you, Kate is somewhere in the, over there, raise your hand, everyone over there, look at Kate. Kate, um, Kate is amazing. And she's like the brains behind most of this presentation. But Kate is gonna help us start with our prompt battle. So raise your hand if you have access to a image generator. If you don't, it's okay, but raise your hand if you do on your phone, on your device, Dolly, Midjourney, okay. So for those of you that do, great. For those of you that don't, you can either find us, we're gonna have a couple computers set up where you can generate an image, create a prompt, or you can also go on lexica.art and find an image that's already been generated using AI. But we're gonna do a battle. Basically, the prompt that we've given is if venture capital were an animal, like what would it be? Would it be a dead unicorn? Like, I, I don't really know. But <laughs> we will have a competition. You can email your submissions to this email address, Nikki N. Horn at bvp.com over the next hour. You can spend the next hour coming up with the best image that you want, and then there's a really great prize. All right, well, thank you all. We look forward to seeing your submissions. We will uh, show the finalists and the best ones in an hour after the breakouts. And if you're interested in chatting more about this ecosystem, uh, join us for the consumer slash AI breakout. Thank you.